Hello, everyone. Um, today we're going to be looking at SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D. Um, we had a previous webinar where we looked at the schematics, the 2D side of things. Um, and then, like I said before, today we're going to be focusing on that SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D. I am Mallory Becker. I'm an applications engineer here at Go Engineer. Um, I work solely with the electrical products. And then I also have with me Stephen Darcy, who will be helping to answer questions. So feel free to um, chat any questions. Um, there should be a question bar in the uh, GoToMeeting or the GoToWebinar um, panel there. And then we also have Melanie Gavora. She is the sales account manager for Electrical. So any, if you're interested in getting a demo, um, or interested in pricing or anything like that, you can reach out to Melanie um, for that information. And then today we are going to be looking at um, the components. So we're going to be looking at how the components tie to the electrical schematic, as well as taking a deeper dive into the um, what the components look like on the 3D side. We'll be looking at manufacturer parts, We'll be inserting in parts into an electrical cabinet. We will be routing wires and cables. And then we're going to also show creating a 2D drawing of your cabinet. And then we are going to start the demo here. Um, before I start, actually, I'm going to um, put out a poll. And um, feel free to answer. It's just asking about. Um, what your current electrical process looks like. So if you um, already have SOLIDWORKS Electrical, if you have Electrical 3D, um, you know, if you, what you're currently using, if it's something different than SOLIDWORKS Electrical. And I'll pull up the demo as you're answering that. I forgot to close the project out. All right, so we are going to be looking into SOLIDWORKS, um, SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D, which is an add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS. And to access that add-in, it's an options, or sorry, not options, it's the drop-down and then add-ins. And then there is, down in that second section, there's a SOLIDWORKS Electrical add-in. To check now I check both boxes um, on either side of that option there so that on startup um, I always pull that license I'm always in SOLIDWORKS electrical um, and then they also get um, part of the routing functionality that's part of the premium license we get the electrical tab that's a part of that and um, so you can go ahead and check that and it will add the tabs available to you here um, over on the right-hand side, we get this um, part of the palettes over on the right-hand side here. You get this electrical tab when you turn that on. So I'm going to right-click in that and go to the electrical project management, which will bring up the electrical project manager. And um, I'm going to go ahead and open up an existing project here. But this is linked to the same, this is the same projects manager that it, you're using on the 2D side. So you'll see the same list of projects um, and be able to open those. Now SOLIDWORKS Electrical, because of that SQL database, allows for multiple users to be working on the same project. You just cannot be opening, so like if somebody has the assembly open, no one else can have the assembly open. But you can be working on the schematic and the 3D side. Um, on the schematic side, you can have, you know, different people can have different pages open in the electrical schematic and be working on that together. So we've got our documents over here. Now I can view these. I can't edit them from the SOLIDWORKS side, but I can at least view the documents. So we're going to be looking at um, building out the 3D panel layout for this schematic here. So we've got a couple of motors, we've got a transformer, some circuit breakers and protection for those motors. And then we've got some push buttons and things as well. And then these are all in um, different locations. So there's gonna be some objects on the door. 
um, and some in the panel itself. Um, we also get um, the tools and then SOLIDWORKS Electrical. You get this um, additional option with that electrical add-in where you can access the projects manager and a lot of the same functionality that you can. So if I need to get to any of my project um, information from here, I can get to that. So say I want to look at the locations here. So we've got a mechanical room. We've got that main electrical closet that also has a door included in that. We've got the boiler room and a heat exchanger as our locations there. I'm going to go ahead and open up the electrical cabinet. So we're going to look at that first. All right, and with this, so in the electrical project, so I'm going to go back into here. And I'm going to go into this process tab. So um, there are, I already have the electrical assemblies added to my project, um, but similar to the 2D panel layout where you have your location for your assemblies, um, SolidWorks Electrical 3D does the same thing. It just makes it in, um, into makes them into assemblies instead of a 2D panel layout drawing. So I've got that main electrical closet and the top level. So anything that has a check will get its own assembly created. Now what's nice about these is that I have this sub-assembly, um, this main electrical closet here. I can use that and route my wires in there so you can make sub-assemblies of these different areas. And then we can put them into a higher level assembly and they'll still reference all the work that we've done in these lower level assemblies. So we'll see that here um, once we get into that main assembly there. All right, so um, once I have an assembly open, I also get this tab on the left-hand side here. And this is um, should look similar to your components tree, or if you have looked at the 2D panel layout, um, similar to how that looks there. So we've got all these components here that we've added to our project. Now I don't have my cabinet and my DIN rail yet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my location and I'm going to go to the properties, and then I'm going to add some manufacturer parts here. So I'm going to search. There's not very many parts in here, so I'm going to search. So here's my cabinet, and I'm also going to get some DIN rail components here. So I'm going to get some, let's see, zero. So I'm going to add a couple of these, and then I'll add a couple of the wire ducting as well. So I've added those to the location. Now I don't necessarily need a component number for these, so that's why I've added them to the location, but I want to be able to associate them. So um, I could insert these um, if I didn't have a cabinet and everything here, but what I'm gonna do instead is associate. So if you have a mechanical person who's building up an assembly, um, we can go through and associate these things after the fact. So he can be building and maybe not necessarily associating to anything in the electrical project. Um, we can come in after the fact and do that. So this is going to be some thin rail here. So I'm just right clicking on the tree item, going to associate and selecting my 3D model. I'm going to do the same thing for a couple of the wire ducts. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and start inserting some of the components. Now, when I look at these components, I'm gonna go to the properties here first and we'll go look at the manufacturer part. What's nice about this is in the library, I can associate a 3D part to my manufacturer part so that when I go to insert this, I can pull up the correct part automatically. And the same part, so the same 3D part can be associated to multiple um, manufacturer part, right? So a, a three pole circuit breaker can be 10 amps, 20 amps, 30 amp. You can associate that same 3D model with, as long as it has all the same circuit information. 
The other thing we have here is all of the circuit information on, you know, in that manufacturer part in the library. This is what we're going to use to um, help us to put the terminals on the 3D part. So we still need that circuit information so that the wires know where to route to. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this component. And again, it's going to pull up a component. Now, if you noticed, it snapped directly to that DIN rail. Um, it's got some mates and things that are put on there to help to speed up the insertion process of these components. So I'm going to click to place that. And then we're going to go and take a look at this component here. So I'm going to open that up so we can see the intelligence behind the component here. So you can see here we've got some um, those points on here. These are um, C points. They are the circuit information put onto the 3D part so that the wires know where to route to. It's going to use that um, circuit information. It's going to use the from to information from the schematic. So the schematic does need to be done before you're able to route the wires. You can still build the panel up and everything like that before the schematic is done. But in order to route the wires and the cables, the schematic needs to be done um, and complete for that. Um, the other thing on here are some that mate. So there is a mate on the DIN rail and then a matching mate on the components to help them snap directly into place. Um, and then the other thing on here are some faces. So um, it's defined that, you know, left side, right side, top and bottom are put onto the parts so that um, you'll see in a minute when we want to insert multiple parts, we're able to just insert the parts and then it knows how to order them, what direction they should be facing, all that good stuff. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead. I want to insert in some more components here. So I want, oops, I'm holding shift, not control. So I want to put all these components um, the rest of the way on this DIN rail. So I'm going to highlight them all, right click and insert. And I want to um, change the order of these. So I want my circuit breakers and then my transformer and then my fuse here. So you can adjust the order. Now I'm going to place the first component on the DIN rail. And then there is a command that's going to pop up that allows me to say, how much space do you want in between these components? So I'm going to say one and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to hit the check mark. And then this is going to process. And then this is going to place all of the components for me. So it's going to create a little um, subassembly and then it's going to place that on the panel for me. And then if I need to make any adjustments to that, if I need to slide it over a bit, I can slide that over. That's got all those components placed. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing on the second DIN rail and I am going to insert in my contactors. So again, I'm going to place the first one. And then I'll space these out a little bit farther. And again, go through a little bit of processing. Have those there. All right, the last thing I need to insert um, into the actual cabinet here is the terminal strip. So what's nice about this is it will allow me using that same functionality to insert in the entire terminal strip. I don't have to insert these one at a time. I don't have to select each one. I can just select the terminal strip, place my first terminal block. And then for this, um, because I want them all um, connected or touching, um, I'm going to have zero space in between and then let the software um, work its way to place those and do all the hard work for me. So you can see there, now I've got that terminal strip and I've got all those components placed. All right, now we're going to move over to the door. And there are some lights and some push buttons 
um, that we're going to be adding here. So I am going to place, I'm just going to go in order here. So I'm going to insert in H1. And again, because I've developed that library and associated these 3D parts, I'm able to just insert and place. If I didn't have something um, associated to it, I could still browse and go find my part that I'm looking for. So H1, I'm going to put here in the middle top of the door. H2, I'm going to put in another row. Now, the reason that this is also, these are kind of snapping into place, is there are planes that are put onto this. So you can set up, if you have these um, configurable things, you can set up your cabinet um, and your, like your door and your parts to easily um, insert these parts, especially if you're going to be reusing doing a lot of reuse, um, that helps in the future. It's a little bit more time up front, but it does help in the long run. Oops, I think I put that on the wrong side. I'm gonna delete that and reinsert that. And I'll just continue on with these, the rest of these buttons here. So you can see with those mates, we've got the buttons coming through the door there. And then um, I want to show you, um, so these go through the cabinet and um, there's something inside of SolidWorks called Smart Features. And this is where you can add in a feature. So like this is going through a door, I want it to cut a hole for me. So you can apply that to the part. And then what we're going to do is select the face of the door. And then what that will do is it will, it's got that cut saved in the part and it will put that into the door. So if I go and open up this door now, should have a hole in it. So you can set that up so those parts um, automatically cut their own hole. You can do the same thing with the Um, with components that go onto the back of the panel. So for your drill holes, for your DIN rail, you can set it up, you know, where they have those holes. You can set that up to, you know, create a screw hole um, to cut through the cabinet there. All right, so now what I want to do is um, we're going to go and route wires, but I want to take a look. So SolidWorks Electrical is looking at the schematic. It's looking at the from to information. It's looking at the wire information for color information, for gauge and size information, that diameter information, and then bend radius information as well. And um, what it will do is if you don't have any of these 3D sketches that I'm going to be, we're going to be looking at here. Um, let me, whoops, let me pull it up here. This EW underscore path. So it's a 3D sketch. Um, it has to be called EW underscore path. Um, and then I've got, there's more hiding in here. In the door. So there are sketches put on here, and again, they're called EW path. This helps to guide the wires. If we don't have anything to guide the wires along, it will just create some kind of loopy um, path um, that will probably not be what you're looking for. So these 3D sketches help to guide the wires. Now, it will still have bends. It's not going to be at these 90 degree angles, um, as we'll see when I go to route the wires here. Um, and you can build those into the part. So like if I open up this uh, wire ducting where I would want wires to pass through, I can put in, this one's called EW access, which is which will work just fine. But I can put it into parts that I know I want wires to route through so that I don't have to add that every time I'm creating a new assembly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and route 
wires. And then there are options over here on the left-hand side. So a SOLIDWORKS route, um, it is gonna take a little bit longer to route that, but this will give you a 3D path of the wire. You can also route as a 3D sketch. So this will just give you sketch lines. It will still give you um, a length and everything like that. It just won't take up, um, it won't create that 3D model. Um, you can use splines, which would add the curves, or you could use lines. Um, and then you have the option to do um, all components, and this will be all components that have an origin and a destination for the wire. Um, so it has to see that origin and destination to be able to route. Or you can do selected components. So if you only want to do wires coming off of these specific components, you can use that selected component. And then there are some routing parameters down here, which are, um, this first one is how far it can look from a routing path to another routing path. Um, to be able to still follow along that path. This middle one is for the distance it can look from a terminal to the routing path to follow along that routing path before it just decides to make its own path. And then this is spacing between the wires, so how much distance you want between wires when they're routed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to route my wires. So what it does is it creates um, an assembly for each of the different wire styles that are used. So you'll see it goes through this, it went through phase one, it's going through phase two, it'll go through phase three and the neutral wire, you know, all the different wires that it can see to route. And it does take, you know, it takes time to route, but if you think about trying to do each one of these wires individually, um, creating a path for each one, um, and then, you know, doing a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, where you uh, sweep around each of the sketches, you can imagine how much longer that would take than just hitting a button and having the software process it. So you can see it followed along those paths. There are 3D sketches that helped it go along here to the door. Um, now it doesn't always come out perfect. I don't want you to think that it's just magic and it's always gonna be beautiful and easy. There's still gonna need to be um, adjustments made. So, and you can make minor adjustments. So I can edit any of these sketches. So I can edit the route. And if I need to move something a little bit, um, I can go ahead and move you know, move the sketches, I can, you know, move the bends and things like that. Um, if you're gonna make major modifications, you should really probably just reroute it. Um, it's easy enough. You can see here, it made, there are these, the sketches that were added here. So you can call all of those out. All right, and now that we have the cabinet done, now I still, I'm gonna put this into another assembly and route cables that are gonna go external to this cabinet. But what I can do is I can create a drawing of the cabinet itself in its current state. So what I'm gonna do is go up to my electrical 3D tab and I'm going to create a 2D drawing. of the cabinet here. And I'm gonna choose the front. Pull that out and place that on my page here. And you can choose to show the wires or not on the, the um, drawing here. So I'm gonna keep those. I'm gonna select that view and then I am going to insert in um, some tables. So this is SolidWorks, so all of the SolidWorks tables, um, ballooning, things like that, all is available. So I'm gonna do a bill of materials. Of my cabinet here. Have that pulled out.
and I don't currently have a title block on this page. But what I can also do is once I have this created, I can create a project drawing and add this to my documentation on the 2D side. So I can add it as a page in my project, which we'll look at here once it's created. And then we have a page that includes, whoops, includes that um, bill of material and everything that you can then print out with your documentation. So I'll save that drawing. I'll also save my assembly. I'll save everything in the assembly. Make sure to save those routes. All right, and I'll close out of that assembly and we'll open up the main assembly. And you can see the cabinet is already in here. And um, what we'll see is the cabinet will look like the cabinet that we just had open. So we've got those components on there. And all that wire information is transferred over to that main assembly. All right, so now I wanna go and route my cables. And I am going to um, go ahead and route. So that is another command on our, so wires are routed separately than cables. So I'm gonna go ahead and route cables. Um, So I'm gonna do that SOLIDWORKS route. And then I'm gonna do all cables. There are two cables and we'll see how this routes. Now there is, there are sketches in here as well. So there are sketches inside of the conduit. Um, and then there are sketches by the motors to help guide the wires for where to route. So I'm just gonna go ahead and route the cables. And again, it's getting the from to information, it's getting any of the cable information from the schematic itself. So we've got these cables that routed. There's also some additional um, sketches that go up to help guide these wires um, into there. So one of the cables routes through here comes up to this motor. And then the other one goes through the wall and goes into, well, this a pump. And you can see here, so there are um, EW cable points that are put onto here. So there are, let me open up this gland here. And that is a different type of connection point that allows for when you're routing cables or multiple wires, it routes them as a solid tube um, and then it will break out into the individual wires at that point. So if we look, there's that EW cable point here. That is where that cable um, goes from its outer jacket to those individual wires to go up into the terminal blocks. Now, if these, um, if you're routing them, there is a way to set which gland these cables are going to run into. So that is the set origin destination. So if I set the origin and destination of the cables, I'm allowed to select the cable 
And then I can select the origin component, which would be this cable gland. And then I can go to the motor and I can select the EW cable point on the motor to ensure, excuse me, to ensure that um, those are going to go into the correct paths and to the correct points. Um, and then those also create an assembly inside of the um, feature tree. And um, you're able to go in and edit them if you need to. So if you need to make some adjustments, uh, minor adjustments, again, I would make minor adjustments. If you need major adjustments, I would try and adjust your 3D sketches um, and use that as your guiding path to correcting the, um, and then also the parameters that are set up. So similar to when you're routing wires, when you're routing cables, you have those parameters for how far it can look from sketches and how far it can look from connection points um, to be able to still follow along that path. Um, and then once these are routed, we get links that are populated. So if I go to my electrical project and look at my reports, anything that has been routed now has a length associated with it. So I can get that length information automatically populated into my report information. So we've got the wire styles and then we've also got the cables. Um, another couple nice things um, are there are design rule checks and one of some of them associate to the let's see design rule checks um, whether you have the 3D components placed or not. So I could go and add and there are quite a few default design rule checks that can be added. And then let me just find let's see. Um, you can check for wires that were routed in 3D. You can check for um, components and so the object is not inserted in 3D. Um, so there's a few different design rule checks that will go. So these wires that are in my schematic have not been routed. And then these objects, the object mark, have not been placed in 3D. So you can do some checks as well with that. So again, so that SOLIDWORKS Electrical 3D add-in allows you to connect to the schematic, and then it allows you to use that information from the schematic, manufacturer part information, wire style information, to be able to route these wires and cables um, efficiently, um, instead of having to do it manually, um, for each individual wire, create a spline, and then try and do a sweep across that. So that allows us to um, do that quickly, and then it also allows you to get those links automatically put into those reports and then generate that final documentation. There's a lot of power with that, with this tool. All right, jump back to our PowerPoint here. So Go Engineer does offer training um, and we have resources. We do have an electrical um, focused team for application engineers. We offer training. So there is a standard 2D training and a standard 3D training. We also offer customized training. So if there's something specific that you want to be trained on or you want to use custom material, we offer training courses to do that. Um, we offer that um, in, um, like on site at one of our locations or um, online. We have a lot of online resources. We have um, YouTube, um, we have blog articles, um, lots of different things that we have um, to show you um, some tips and tricks with that. We also offer, uh, with your subscription, you get certification tests. Um, there is an electrical certification that can be taken. Um, and then Go Engineer is almost nationwide. Um, don't quite have that northeast corner covered yet. Um, but what that means for you, we have everybody, uh, we have tech support from east coast to west coast times, so st eastern standard to Pacific. Um, and that means that you have extended 
hours for tech support. So there is a phone number that's on our website as well as um, you can email in as well. Um, and from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Central Time, we have um, available engineers to help support you. Um, we also, also offer services. So like with some of the setup and things like that, we offer help. We can help you do that um, on the electrical side or we can do that for you. So if you supply us with the components without the intelligence and some data sheets, we can create those components for you. Um, we can also help you with, you know, um, implementation services, so helping get your project template set up, helping you to start to build up your libraries, create your schematics. We can, again, work with you on that, or we can um, we can set it up so that we do that and then deliver that those services for you. SolidWorks Electrical does integrate with PDM. Um, there are a few different options. We have a YouTube um, video that will that shows all the different options um, and then we have also other for other CAD um, we have rendering animations and CAD automation um, services and support for all of those things so and you can sign up and subscribe for um, a go engineer newsletter um, you can find us on social media you can register for training on our website um, and then this was the second um, webinar as a part of three series. Um, tomorrow we'll be showing some work with PNID. Um, so, and then um, the previous one was the um, 2D electrical. So feel free to, uh, we'll be having these posted online um, on our YouTube channel um, here in the next couple weeks, hopefully. And then some time for Q&A. All right, so we've got a couple uh, questions that came in. Uh, one of the first ones was, uh, where's the best place to get 3D models for components? Um, so we, they, you can take um, any step files. We just need to be able to put a plane and a point on the part. So you can either go to the manufacturers or there is 3D Content Central, has a lot of parts. I've downloaded quite a few from there. Um, there's also the electrical content portal where, where, where you can um, find the manufacturer parts and then you can get the 2D and the 3D part information from there for some of the parts. All right, perfect. And then uh, can you report the length of the wires and the cables on the 2D schematic side? So just on the 2D or? Like from the 3D going to the 2D. And that, I mean, I've replied back Definitely is pretty much the answer on that one. Yes, so that SQL database allows um, that information to be um, transferred between the two seamlessly. Um, it's looking at that same database. It's knowing which wire it's routing. It's pushing that length back. It shows up in the reports. Um, if you wanted it to show up on the schematic, you can also do that with a custom wire number that would call out the length information. Nice. And then uh, the last uh, Q&A was just a, a nice job on the rules check. Uh, they didn't know that they could run the rules check in the 3D side. Yes. And that's all the questions and answers we have coming through. Awesome. Well, thank you for, yeah, thank you for attending and um, hanging out with us for a little bit, learning more about SolidWorks Electrical 3D, um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.